Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the video. Today, as promised, we're going to build out that thumbnail gallery that I talked about in React. Um, if you saw the preview video, then you know what we're going to build. But if this is your first time here, uh, we're going to build a thumbnail gallery component. And it looks good as is, but we're also going to add some interactivity to it. So clicking on these images will toggle the image as well as some text content that's associated with it. So before we jump into the real code, I kind of, I just want to jump back into the wireframe real quick. So think of thumbnail gallery as a top level uh, parent component that's going to encapsulate all of the functionality inside of it. And we're going to build out um, sub components like active thumbnail window, thumbnail, thumbnail grid, blah, blah, blah. So what's interesting about this is um, sort of a challenge for myself where I'm just going to code code from the hip on the fly. I'm not going to um, do any video editing or anything like that because I'm just too lazy. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we're gonna start out on with a blank canvas and I'm gonna show you how to do everything from scratch. So let's just do it. And we'll do so by opening up my text editor and you'll see my SRC folder. Um, I have an index.js file, and really all this is is a uh, top level app component where we're going to render our thumbnail gallery inside of. This is typical to any React project where you have a very top level component where all of your other um, components are built, and this actually throws it into the, into the DOM. So it throws everything that you created onto the screen. So we don't really have to do anything in here, but in app.js, we actually have to do something. So what I'm gonna do is I created some easy templates for myself so I don't have to copy and paste. I mean, so I don't have to type it out every time. I'm gonna copy this and inside of here, we're going to set up the scaffold and I'm just gonna replace this with app and just to see if we're getting something on the screen, we're going to save, and then we're going to jump back to, we're going to use this for reference, but this is the blank canvas we're going to start with. So, all right, that's good. Now we're connected to the DOM, but obviously this is very bland. So looking at our thumbnail gallery wireframe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a top level component called thumbnail gallery, and then we're going to try to render or build out this entire little box here. So to do so, I'm gonna create a folder called, whoops, and then gallery. And inside of this, we're gonna put all of our other components. So we'll, we'll start this off with an index.js, which will, will be the entry point. And I think I still have this on my Yes, I do. So we'll just name this thumbnail gallery. And then we'll just paste this text inside of the div. <clears throat> Whoops. So we can just see, get some, get some, you know, quick feedback. That's typically what I like to do. Just to know that, you know, it's rendering to the DOM and everything, all the imports are working. So we need to import this. And we can say thumbnail gallery from thumbnail gallery. And since I, I use an index.js, uh, by default, um, NPM node it knows to just pull in the index.js. So I don't have to actually um, declare it, which is, which is nice. So in here, why don't we set up that component Save it, and we will jump back to the browser. And there it is. So like I said, we need to build the box here. So we don't need to be in this anymore. App.js App is all set. We need to start building it here. So I think the best thing is to start building up styles for this. So we can do something like this. Gallery styles. And let's check out, not the wireframe, the working version. So it seems to me that 
where we need a gray grayish background and obviously this stuff renders in front of it but let's build out the whole box in gray just so we can get some feedback like i was mentioning before okay and we'll do a height of I'm trying to think here height of 500 we can do that if we don't like it we can change it and so nothing's going to happen yet so i want to show you um still the same thing and if you're keen enough you'll notice that i didn't really apply these styles to the component so i actually have to do this and then we, if we save we'll jump back and look at that it's as easy as this so just to cure my OCD, I don't, I don't want it hanging over to the left. I want to just work with everything nice and centered on my screen. So we can do something pretty simple here. We'll do maybe 40 pixels and we can do auto. So it just will give us 40 pixels from the top of the screen and then align its left and right. So this will push it to the center and that should work for us. All right, great. I, I think this is good. So why don't we, yeah, I want to take the text out of there. It's really not necessary anymore. Um, next, I think we should, let's check the wireframe. So we have the whole, I'd say parent uh, div box, if you want to call it that. And we need to start building out some stuff inside of it. So before we start building out like active thumbnail window, uh, thumbnail, etc., it looks like we need to separate the actual parent container into a left and a right side. And then we can produce stuff like text content area and all this stuff inside of it. So this should be pretty easy actually. So, so we're gonna do two divs. And just to make this easy on us, right side. Sorry, I got, a, I got a new keyboard, so I'm getting used to it. And I haven't been using Atom lately either, so I'm batting a thousand right now. So left, so let's say left, right, and then we will jump back. And interesting. But this is just, this is not React, this is just regular CSS. And you should know by default that the div has inherent styling of uh, a block, a display block. And so that's why they're stacked on top of each other. So really what we need to do is have left uh, and right sit next to each other. And then we need to get them to be 100% height of um, the parent um, box here. And then have them like even width, right? So. I think we can do something. We can just do some inline styling. So why don't we say, I'm gonna start using Flexbox here because it's pretty convenient. So why don't we say Flex1 just to see what this is gonna do. All right, and since we're, gonna, we're calling out a Flex style, which depends on Flexbox, we should also say display flex on the parent container and all right that's looking pretty good as you can see this is actually this is great um we have what we need here and if anything comes up as we go we can come back and fix this so uh, no big deal so what should we start on next okay so why don't we do active thumbnail window and what's interesting about this now is so every other component in here is not going to be a class-based React component. It's going to be what's called a functional component where it doesn't hold any state. It doesn't really take care of any specific logic and, and um, functionality. It kind of just, you tell it what to display and it just does what it's told. So um, it's really not the brains of the operation, but it's something that we need. So 
we'll be building all of these uh, components out as functional components. So inside of thumbnail gallery, let's create a new file. I'm so not used to Adam. Oh my goodness. Been using VS Code. Okay. Active thumbnail window. That looks good to me. And so I also have a little template here. So I don't have to type it all out. And then we will replace. And we will say, replace all, beauteous. And I just want to see, uh, we'll use this for feedback. So we will save, I'm going to copy this. And what we'll, what we'll do, because we're going to keep working on it, we're going to split it right, and then we're going to um, kind of use both of these just to make it easier on us. So we'll do import from active thumbnail window. And then we want it to be on the left side, right? So we can get rid of this. And we'll save and we'll jump back. And there it is. So it's not, it has really no height, it has a height of 18 pixels. Uh, so we have to do some additional stuff here. Um, what I, I want to mention real quick, if you notice, when I, whenever I save something in my, in my editor, it automatically updates. And so I'm using Webpack Dev Server for that, just, to, just so you know. So um, it's, just, it's just updating in real time, which is great. Um, just, so just keep that in mind if you're wondering how it does that. <clears throat> so to get this to the height we want, as you can see, it, it takes up more of the, of, the, of the height than thumbnail grid. So let's, let's start working on some styling for that. And you can do something like this. And so why don't we say height 65%. And we'll do with 100%. And just so we, we get some additional feedback, I'm going to do backgrounds of a blackish type color. And we can, this should be familiar to you by now. Styles, all right. I think we're looking pretty good here. And before we even look, um, actually, why don't we check it out in the browser? And that does work. Let's see what we have here. Um, typically, <clears throat> I think you'd want to, you actually don't have to because this, this has the flex one property. I was gonna say, you might have to assign a position relative to this, but it's really not necessary since the div is stretched anyways. So don't think we have to do that right now. So what we'll do, we'll leave it, We'll leave it that black color for now, take out the text. <clears throat> and I think we should hop onto thumbnail grid. So let's just double check in the wireframe. All right, so we'll do this first and then we'll build out the individual thumbnail component. So it's pretty simple. We're gonna call this thumbnails. And we can call it thumbnail grid, right? That's what I named it in the wireframe. Thumbnail grid, and eh, I might actually use this because we're going to have to do a style object on it anyways. So it's already there. We'll close out of that. And let's find this and we'll replace it with thumbnail grid, place all. And we're also gonna, for additional feedback, close out of this, save, and now let's import it into, into here. Okay. And then remember, it has to be below this. So let's throw that in there. We'll 
Oops. Forgot that syntax. Okay, so let's see what we have now. Oh boy, what happened? So, um, yeah, we're having a little issue here. So, and I think, because this is just, it's, it's causing things to overflow. So, why don't we remember inside of active thumbnail window? Oh, I see what's happening because I didn't delete the styles. Dummy. But anyways, this is good. So remember we, um, in active thumbnail window, we give it a height of 65%. So really what we need to do actually uh, to get it to be 100% uh, both of these components, we need to just some simple math, right? So this and the 65% will add up to 100%. And let's give this a, a terrible color of red, uh, yellow, I mean. And let's see what that does. All right, beautiful. So it's the height we need. So I think what we'll do from here is we'll just build out the thumbnail then, because that, 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 that's looking all right. And should we keep this open? Yeah, I'll keep that open. So thumbnail.js. Hopefully this time I don't forget the style object. And we'll try to replace that as, as thumbnail. Okay. And let's give it a, another terrible color of red. And yeah, we'll keep this height here just so you can see w what the heck happens here. And we'll do like a random, I don't know, a random width just to see what occurs. So this is thumbnail. We'll save and as you can see, we're not going to import it into the main uh, index.js file inside of Thumbnail Gallery because Thumbnail lives inside of Thumbnail Grid. So it's a child of Thumbnail Grid. And Thumbnail Grid is a child of Thumbnail Gallery. So let's import into Thumbnail Grid from Thumbnail. And then. All right. Oh, Jesus. No, I did that right. Sorry, this is what happens when you're kind of coding on the fly. <laughs> you do make mistakes. I was second guessing what I did, but I think this should, this should be all right. Great. Um, not the greatest. And you can see there's some weird margin going on here. So what happens if we put multiple instances of thumbnail in here? Let's see what happens. Oh boy. All right. So what we need to do, so these are inherently set to uh, display block, right? So we need to actually um, set this to flex, I believe, or it looks like it has a uh, style of flex, right? I think we gave it that unless that's the, it looks like that's the top level component. So it doesn't have a style of flex. So let's do that first. And then what we should get is, I believe, um, they'll sit side by side. Yeah, so that should be good on the on the on the thumbnail grid parent level. So hopefully these thumbnails will sit side to side now, but they they're still going to be messed up. Interesting. Well, I think that's because I gave it a. I gave it the correct width, <laughs> so that's really what we wanted to to be, um, but what happens if we do something like this? The four show up well, but what if we throw in for a total of eight? And now things start getting funky. So you'll see that it automatically scales itself down and it just keeps going. And what we really want to happen is um, four to be on a line and then to break down into the next line. So uh, the fifth one would break Break down. So that's pretty easy to do. So in thumbnail grid, the parent, we can use a property called flex wrap. And this, you're going to see that this should solve our, our issue. In 
interesting. It somewhat solved our problem. So why is that? Oh, and so it's a, it's a height issue. So I, I obviously set the wrong height. Um, so in here, see how it's uh, 35? It should actually be, um, each thumbnail should take up 50% of the height of the entire thing. So if we do 50, I think we should be all, all set. All right, that's looking great. Um, we'll leave that as is. Um, we're still gonna keep the terrible red color, just just so we know we're not breaking anything as we go. So why don't we, I guess we can hook up text content area. And I'm, I'm not even gonna make this as a component actually, uh, and you'll see, so let's close out of these. And so really the right side, um, if we jump back, is that showing up? Okay. So really just on the right side, I'm just gonna dump the text out here. So some cool text and we'll just give it a little bit of padding, 40 PX and then jump back and there we go. I think that should be sufficient. So from here, um, I think it's time that we make our Ajax request to my tiny little API I, I created on um, Amazon S3. So what we'll do is we'll actually pull in some real images. So let me grab that URL. And we can actually visit it in the browser so you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right, so when, when we make a successful request, we should receive an array of objects and it consists of three properties, each object. And we have the URL to the actual image, which is hosted on Amazon. And if you do that, you'll see there's the image. So then we have the title and body text, which we will put in here. And then just the rest of the images will always obviously go into this section. So let's make the Ajax request. And I already pre-installed a uh, HTTP request library. It's called Axios, it's quite popular. So, so in the top level thumbnail gallery, since this encapsulates all this, this is kind of the brains of the operation up here, right? So we'll use a React lifecycle method. And what component did mount um, does is it only executes once. Uh, other lifecycle methods in React uh, execute a lot actually. And this is where we want to do our Ajax request because we don't want to be executing this uh, time after time after time. Um, we only need it to we only need to pull in the data once. So this would be where you, you would want to make your Ajax request. So why don't we do? Whoops. And I think. Okay, cool. So we're saying get um, whatever response it's going to be. So we know it's uh, an array. And then if it's successful, just think of res as an object that we're going to receive back. And I'll, I'll show you by console logging it. Okay. So we don't really know what, what this even looks like. So um, I'll kind of explain it, um, when it pops up on the console. So this should have automatically reloaded. And here is our response. So we had a status of 200, a status text. Now we have some other stuff here. There's a lot going on, but really what we care about is, is the data object. As you can see, our array is in there. And so we need to access uh, res.data.thumbnails, just regular JavaScript syntax. So why don't we, And we'll console log that and jump back. And now we've extracted the data that we need and nothing else. <laughs> so to be able to manipulate this data in a, in a way that um, that is useful to us, we need to set this to state. So we're gonna create our state object up here and we're gonna have an initializer. 
just so it's easier to kind of work with. Um, so thumbnails, when the, when the, when the component first um, comes on the screen, um, when, it, when it first mounts, um, it's an empty array. And the reason why it's going to be an empty array is because uh, AJAX requests, HTTP requests are inherently asynchronous. So they don't obviously, it, it's fast, but it's not immediate. So this is immediate when it when this renders. So uh, and I want to prove that to you. So we're going to do this dot set states, and we're going to basically reassign this to the the array of images that we have. So okay, and we're not done yet because I want to, like I said, I want to prove. Thumbnails, and what we'll see when uh, we check out the console, you're going to see um, an empty array printed out, and then you'll see the eight images or the objects. And so that's what I mean when I when I say um, HTTP requests are inherently asynchronous. So it's not immediate; it has to go over uh, an, an internet connection, right? So, all right, this is looking good. Um, give me a second to think of where I kind of want to go with this. Hmm. All right. So we have the thumbnails. Why don't we try to populate something into active thumbnail window. And what we want to do, or the purpose of active thumbnail window is to just show the active image and on first load of the page on initial render, we're just gonna say, okay, the first image in the array, show that. And then once you start clicking around, then it should change. So just to do a little bit of experimentation, I also wanna show you something as well. So this is a fancy little thing called object destructuring. So we don't have to repent and to, um, prepend this dot state to everything. So we'll be able to just use this versus this dot state dot thumbnails. So we're gonna create a prop called active thumbnail. And we'll say, so, rem so remember thumbnails is an, is an array of eight objects and the way that you can access uh, a specific element in an array would be something like this, right? By an index. So why don't we just say zero? So that will give us the first object. We'll save, and then let's receive this prop in the active thumbnail window component. And then we'll just do a quick console log just to get some feedback. I love the word feedback, apparently. Active thumbnail. So let's do a console log. All right, cool. So that is the object, right? So it's just a URL to the image, body text, uh, and title. So that works. And so what we need to do is we're going to create an image tag, give it a, a source attribute. And really all we need um, is the image URL, right? We don't have to have put any text in here. So why don't we say active thumbnail dot image URL. And just so you can see again um, in the response, that's what the property is called. So let's save and see this thing blow up. See, I have inside information. Um, you probably didn't think it would blow up, but I knew. So why does this happen? So cannot read property image URL of undefined. And that goes back to what I was mentioning when you saw that on initial render, the array is um, for a flash, maybe like a second or something, or even less, um, it's empty. So you can see that we're trying to immediately access um, an object uh, property 
and it's not there. So React is kind of crashing on us. So we need to come up with um, something a little more ideal here. And so, and as, as well, we, we need to stop doing this. We can't hard code an index in there because we need things to dynamically change. So we're going to come up with a solution here. We'll leave this because eventually it's going to work. And what we're going to say is we're going to say, we're going to create a class. We don't have to do this. We, have, we can do render thumbnails. And this will make more sense as we go. You think that we're like rendering thumbnails? We will. We're going we're gonna to throw thumbnail grid in here as well, but I just want to show you um, the reason I'm doing this. So let's take this, remove it, and we're going to say in here, we're going to destructure um, thumbnails so we don't have to do that annoying this dot state. And we're going to say if thumbnails dot length. So if this array has a length, then do something with it. So in here, we're going to return this, right? So let's say return. All right, cool. And let's leave that for now. Um, we can change, we're going to change that to be dynamic um, in a second. So if this doesn't succeed, it's just going to show nothing. You could even do something like this, just so people know um, that there's obviously it returns null. You don't have to, but it'd be nice of you. So interesting. So what is occurring here? And the reason why nothing's really showing up and you see that thumbnail grid is now up, up here for some reason, uh, it's because we're not rendering this to the, to the um, DOM anymore. And so we need to do something like this. And now this should be good. There it is. That's great. Um, so let's just get this um, the styling correct for this first, and then we'll make that uh, dynamic. We'll make the, um, the index dynamic. So we can do an inline style on the image tag. We just want to do something like and so we're going to put this as position relative so the image says oh I'm, I need to be a hundred percent width and a hundred percent height of something right so when you say position relative, it's going to sit, it's going to say, okay, let's be a hundred percent, hundred percent width of this parent component. So that should do us pretty good. And there it is. So I think we're all set, um, with the styling. And so let's make this dynamic. And the way to do that would be can create an active index. And we're going to set it to initially to be zero. So, um, Obviously, we want to show the, the first image in the array uh, first, right? So we'll initialize it at zero, and we're going to do this. And this will make more sense as we go, but we'll copy this and put it in here. So just think this is really just a number. Um, it's just a, it's a variable now, but it holds a number value. So we save. It's still there, right? Uh, beautiful. So now we'll start hooking up a little bit more functionality, but I think that's cool for now. Um, and what I want to do as well, because thumbnail grid is going to have the same problem. I'm trying to think if I if I show you that, so it kind of sinks in. Um, we could. Well, let's do that. Then you you'll you'll see me. I can just refactor it. So we're going to assign a prop of thumbnails and give it a value of thumbnails. So you can do this. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it knows that this is different than that um, behind the scenes. So we're going to pass the whole array down to thumbnail grid. 
Now we should be good here. And we're gonna open thumbnail grid up. And let's pass that down. So thumbnails, right? I hate that I keep doing this. There we go. Let's console log just to see if we're getting something. I'm gonna take these out. I am gonna copy one though, because they might need it. So this is gonna be empty for now, but we so we don't have any other console log statements right now in the in the app. So this should show up just so we know we're getting it. So we are receiving it as props in the thumbnail grid. So what we need to do is we need to map through this, um, or if you don't know what, what map means, it's a built-in function that basically iterates through an, an array. So it will iterate through, you know, all the elements in your, in your array. So remember we have eight, right? So we can do something like this, thumbnails.map. And we'll do for each thumbnail element, which is an object, we will return a thumbnail. And React is gonna yell at me, but I will show you that as well. So this should work. Unless I did something stupid, I can fix that. Um, okay, cool. So they are back. Uh, we're rendering them successfully, but see how React is saying it needs to have a unique key, and that's just kind of um, React takes um, uses keys to keep track of all the um, items that are like mapped through and whatnot. So it's just something. Look it up, um, and you'll be able to maybe in the documentation and you can learn more about it. But let's just remember that this is an object, right? So it has those three properties. So for each one we go through, we so that thumbnail that we called out is, is really just this. So it just has a name for it, just a temporary variable. So why don't we give it a key? It has to be a unique value, right? So we'll give it a key of thumbnail dot image URL. So, I mean, that will be unique as well. Um, pretty sure it will be definitely for this, um, for this example. So, We'll do, the, we'll do the key, and so from here, in in thumbnail grid, we only need the image. We don't need the text content. So maybe we can do something like this. So why don't we just say image URL equals thumbnail dot image URL, and so you might think that we're passing key down as a prop, but no, it doesn't get. This is just a built-in thing in React that it uses, so this actually doesn't get passed down. So um, don't use it uh, as anything. You just need to put it on there for tracking. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab this via props. So copy this, give it a save, and then I think it should be all right with this. If we need to come back to it, we'll fix it, but I think it's all right. So let's accept. Um, this in here, image URL, and again, we should just do an image tag, we'll do image URL, and since we, um, you know, took it off of the object, and so we don't have the whole object now, we just have the URL, we can just throw it in like that, and let's see things explode, because they definitely will. Okay, so, I mean, <laughs> it looks okay, I guess, but um, not ideal. So, pretty easy to take care of. Let's get the background red off. Don't need that anymore. We'll do the usual inline style. All we need to do, 100%. And let's, let's give this a position of relative, the, uh, the parent div up here. Might not have to, but I'm just doing it anyways. And there it is, that's great. And notice that it's kind of like um, laggy, right? 
So if people, if enough people tell, tell me that they like this video in the comment section, please do comment, give me likes, reach out to me on Twitter. If I get enough feedback that people actually enjoy this, we'll do a second video where we'll make this a lot more uh, performance driven and we'll, we'll add loading spinners, like a, maybe like a full screen thing that says um, building your thumbnail gallery or something like that. So you don't see that um, lagging is because that, that looks crappy, right? So, but for now, we're not gonna, we're not gonna cover that. So everything looks good here. Why don't we, we could, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do the, the text content at very last, um, cause it's really not that difficult. So let's close that. And really the next thing we do is we need to hook up those click listeners, right? Those, uh, those events, we need to listen for, uh, click events, right? We need a toggle in between. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a class uh, based method and we'll say handle click. It's really this simple. It's really not that hard. I don't know why everybody makes it up to be. It is pretty confusing getting started though. I'm not going to lie. I had no idea what I was doing when I first started. So we'll do a handle click. And let's just do this so we know it's working. So what we need to do is we need to pass this down um, from the top level thumbnail gallery to the thumbnail grid and add into it the thumbnail. So it actually has to traverse down um, a few levels, right, via props. So what we'll do is we're going to pass it to the thumbnail grid first. We can give it a handle click. Um, I'll just do that so you don't get confused. So this dot handle click. Copy this prop. Make sure to save it. And we need to go into thumbnail grid. Add another prop on there. And inside of here, we'll also give it give this one a prop of handle click. So welcome to props. Um, so that's good. And then finally, inside a thumbnail, add the prop again, and then on the image element here, why don't we click? So on click, we need to. So this is a, so this really behind the scenes gets converted to a real like JavaScript on click event listener. So you have to set a real um, listener here. I know it's probably confusing, but if you have trouble uh, wrapping your head around it, just leave a, you know, ask a question in the comment section. Hopefully I'll be able to answer it. So this is really what we're going to do here. So on click, we'll execute that handle click that is all the way up here. So in theory, if we go back to the browser, we should, it's the, it's the old one, my bad. So if we click on these, I'm hoping we see perfect. So you can see it's firing each time. So we don't have much work left, but I mean, if you know anything about JavaScript at all, so whenever you click on something, there's uh, called event propagation. Uh, so an event occurs and it bubbles up. So we want to um, catch that, catch the event object that's bubbling up. And we can do something like this. So we can accept E the, or the event um, and do something with it inside of handle click. So why don't we do const? Yeah, actually, do I want to do that first? No leave this here and what we'll do is we actually have to pass this um, an additional element. I was incorrect there. So let's split that right and we need to actually do something inside a thumbnail grid. So in the map function there's actually a second parameter that you can call and it's just a index. So each time you go through 
um, you iterate through this just increments. So it starts at zero and it goes all the way through. So this is going to keep track of, you know, where we are in the array. So this is, we're going to use this to know which image to show in the array um, back up in thumbnail gallery. And I'll show you. So you can say index equals i. You want to pass down index into here. And so you can use, if you're used to the data properties on elements, you can do data. You can name whatever you want and just pass the index in. And so that should work. And if we use e, we say const active index, or why don't we say new active index. console log and see. Hopefully this works. All right, there it is. So check this out. You'll, you should expect when we click, when we clear this, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And, our, and obviously arrays are uh, zero index. They start at zero. So that's why it ends at seven, but it is eight elements. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to use that to set the new state of active index. So we just have to do this. I messed that up. So active index, and we'll do new active index. And so believe this should work. So now we should be able to toggle through everything. And there we go. That's, that's looking good. So I don't want to add a quick style to give it um, a pointer. So let's just do that should work. All right, nice. So last thing we need to do is just get the text content to show up as well. So we're going to run into the same problem. Um, interestingly enough, we didn't actually error out on this, but I actually just want to throw this into here. Let me just double check something. Okay. So in here, we need to also throw in just so we can encapsulate everything and you will see that this will probably crash so what are, what's, what's it saying here it's it's still working interestingly enough but um you need to wrap it with an adjacent jsx element um see did you want a jsx fragment we're actually going to use that I won't explain what it is, but just look in the documentation and you should be able to um, understand it because the React docs are actually pretty stellar now. So if we paste this in, this should wrap everything we need and we should get rid of that error. And there we go. Um, none of this broke. And so let's just get the um, text in there. So I want to kind of do the same thing here and just do something like and we'll just do the same thing here. Just throw it right underneath this. And we'll do the same thing I'm going to take the same exact um, state properties, destructure them. By the way, this is called object destructuring. If I did not mention that, I might have, but say the same thing. And we can say 
we could just put it in a, we could do, let's see what happens if we do a uh, fragment. And in here, we can do H1. And let's do, Thumbnails, active index, and then we need to access the title. Let's just see if that works. Beautiful. And there it is. And so just to wrap it up, let's get the body text in there. And we should be all set. And we'll just replace this should be just body text. And I think we should be good. All right, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you watching the video. And um, like I said, please reach out to me at any medium you would like. Uh, should be pretty responsive. Definitely uh, like the video, follow me on GitHub if you'd like. Um, I'll probably post links and stuff like that in the video description. So. Uh, feel free to reach out. Hopefully this was useful to you and yeah, see you soon.